And you're very welcome back to the very special sideline view here, live from Tuberty's in Doombeg, remembering the 1992 Munster football final win over Kerry on Sunday, July 19. Now I'm joined by Tom Maloney, or Tom Morrissey, I should say, Aidan Maloney and James Hanrahan here, the main, the two midfielders and the goalkeeper on that 1992 football side. Tom, we have to put a rumour to bed straight away. We heard the training was hard. The Clare footballers trained in the showgrounds in Innes. We heard you tried to tell John Mohan that you had an allergy to horses and you couldn't train. Is that true or not? I did. I had an allergy to horses. <laughs> I had an allergy to horses here beside me too. So. <laughs> but uh, you were seen with your head in a horse trough uh, drinking water later, I right hear. The horse wasn't his it. <laughs> Excellent. So, Aidan, you didn't have an awful lot of time to gel with uh, Tom. I suppose Tom came into the, the Clare scene late in 92, but what was he like as a midfield partner and how did you get on together in the middle of the field? Well, uh, Tom arrived uh, in, I think, around January uh, in 92 and, and, to be honest, he was, a, he was a breath of fresh air. He was, I mean, Tom hasn't changed a bit since, the day, since those days since we got to know him, but, uh, you know, we had a lot of training done and Tom came in then and Give John Tom his due. Uh, he uh, he didn't like to be beaten even in the training, so he was he had the right attitude today. He came in. No, uh, James Hanrahan. James, you were in goal that time. What was Tom like as a, as a man to pick out at midfield? Was he uh, uh, an easy man to pick out one of those uh, kickouts? Oh, sure, it was very hard finding him the other time. He was doing a lot of lot of hiding around the field, but sure. Uh, no, Tom was a great midfielder. He was a great fielder of the ball, you know. And once you put the ball out there nine times out of ten, he was going to catch it. So, you know, he was. He was probably a vital cog in, in our team. You know, it was something we were probably missing for a couple of years, but uh, he made a difference when he came in. Now, of course, Tom, I suppose, I mean, you, you had a, an interesting start to your Clare career, the under-21s, and an incident with a packet of cigarettes and Noel Walsh maybe could have put a, a premature end to your Clare career. <laughs> that was above the Sligo, and that was 1990, and under-21s was senior. <laughs> it was. <laughs> And in terms, I suppose, I mean, tell us uh, what happened with Noel Walsh and you're, you're maybe lighting up a cigarette in the dugout. I remember that we, we, we met in the West County and we got a bus up to Sligo. We were playing Sligo above and Noel Walsh wasn't even there. Right? So I think it was Donald Clancy and Martin Flynn picked the team. There was only 16 on the bus. So Donald Flynn and Martin, Donald, Martin Flynn and Donald Clancy picked the team. And sure, I was the new kid on the block, so I was left in the line. So that, was, that wasn't too bad. But I was smoking at the time, so... Going out and I wasn't too impressed about that. I brought the cigarettes out with me. He was laying up against the, dress, the, the dugouts, smoking a fag when Noel Walsh came and he was roaring about this when he was roaring at that. And he, said, and he looked, who are you? He says to me, he says, Tom Arrasi, I said to him, have you any interest in playing football for Clare? To be quite honest, you know, I said, well, you're not that too interested at all, I said to him. <laughs> and what made you change your attitude, Tom, in the years coming up to 92? Um... Basically, the, the, the boys, the boys, all the boys, the, the, the panel that was there, the, 19, the 91 all Ireland B winning team, um, great friends with every one of them, and every one of them, it was them that brought me into the, the panel, because I hadn't a notion, that, like, I, mean, I, I, I had no notion of going playing with player football. And I suppose, Aidan, I mean, Tom got you in a few scrapes, I understand in the semi-final there was a, a punch aimed at Tom and it landed on your jaw, is that correct? Oh, that's right, I, I took a lot of them for Tom, to be honest, you know, but, uh, you know, one of the best things I remember about Tom, he used to always say to me, you know, before we go out, he'd often say, you, you'd go for the high ones, but leave the very high ones to me, he'd say. <laughs> and is that how it worked that's, out? That's how it worked, we, we had a good understanding in that way. James, I suppose as a midfield partnership, what were Aidan and Tom like as a goalkeeper trying to, to locate uh, players in the middle? And obviously Kerry didn't start with Ambrose O'Donovan, the 84 centenary captain. So that must have been a huge boost in the, in the build-up to the game, knowing that he had a great chance at dominating midfield. Yeah, well, the two boys were great fielders, as I said, and two of them had uh, great athletic ability. Uh, you know, they could get around the field there. And even, even Tom there, you know, some of the runs he made during the game, once he got ahead of a man, there was no catching him. So, you know, in any game we played in, they always gave us an edge in the middle of the field. And uh, I suppose they complemented each other in, in a funny sort of way. But, uh, you know, they worked well together. And many of the time, uh, you know, when we were in trouble, they came back. Aidan was great. He had played in full-back before. And 
you know he did a lot of the defensive side of the, the game and whereas Tom was, was probably better going forward and chipped in with a few scores every now and again and you know, so they gave us an edge in the middle, but they worked hard and they worked hard for the team, the same as everybody else. Now, your cousin Marty Morrissey was full of praise for you in that Munster final, Tom. That catch at the end there, especially. Uh, did you slip Marty a fiver or a tenner beforehand uh, to get all those praise and mentions in the commentary? I did not. That's his job to commentate. <laughs> he's getting enough already. Yeah, he's getting enough already. He's right. I'm sure he hasn't uh, <laughs> let you forget it. But, Aidan, in terms of, of taking on Kerry that day, what are your own particular memories of, of the Munster semi final and again coming on to, to, to take on Kerry in the Gaelic grounds that day? Well, uh, you know, as Tom will tell you, you know, we especially the Kerry match, you know, when we when we talked about it, it uh, you know, into team meetings as such, you know, we. When we went to see Kerry we, 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 in the semi-final, we, we noticed that they weren't that strong at midfield and if we could get on top of them at midfield, that was one of our main aims going out there, that we knew if we could go down and if we could even break 50-50 or get 60-40 off midfield, which you know, we were confident enough of doing, like, you know, and um, we felt that we were in with a chance, but that's what we needed to do and I think in, in the overall picture that was the difference in the day like, and of course know. Seamus Moynihan starting his first senior game for Kerry was there any sense that this kid he was only 18 years of age that this was going to be a day that you might be able to soften him up a little bit and, and introduce him to Munster football well that would have been the intention but I mean to be honest uh, he's a, he was a super athlete like I mean he started it was 21 to 21 all day with him like you know and he just run for fun like so you know, when you have a player like that, it takes all your ability just to stay with him because he, he was a fella, if you lost him for a second, he'd, be, he'd, be, he'd have 20 yards got on you. So it was all, a, you know, that was my job. And I mean, Tom would add the flair to what we needed and there was no doubt he did do on the day. Like, and Tom, what are your own particular memories of 92 that day? Have you any standout memory from the game or, or maybe the celebrations afterwards? Sure, we're still celebrating it. You know, but uh, on, the, on the day itself, like we were... Um, we all met in the West County Hotel and there was I, I, I can remember PGOD from Kilrush he was going round and he was doing little mini interviews with everyone about what we were going to do for the day you know and basically one of my interviews, well, one of my questions back to him was I said we're going to bait Kerry today and I said we're not one bit afraid of him and the training that we had done and it, it was all aimed at this now there was 30, 30 was there training, you know, and we were all we were all like brothers inside, and we and basically to this day we are still like brothers, but we went down and we weren't afraid of Kerry. There was no way every one of us was gonna fight for every one of us out there that day, you know, and and that's basically we were done with that attitude, and they said, "Fake Kerry, you know, we're we're gonna bait Kerry," and basically we did. We hossed into him and we bait him. What, what was it like in the dressing room beforehand or even at half time in the game was there still a sense that the confidence was sky high that this Kerry team was there for the taking well, to be quite honest with you Kevin I don't even remember before we went out to that game I don't know what way I was so piped up I do not remember half time I don't and at the end of the game then I was gone off to the first aid so I, was, so I, I, remember, I don't remember much about after the game even either you know I missed the presentations everything like 